All right, hi everybody. In this video, we're going to learn how to make a basic interactive solar system. In this demonstration, you'll be able to change the planet mass, which will change its size. You'll be able to change the sun mass and its size. And you'll be able to look at it close up, so we're changing the scale of it, or very far away. And we'll be able to place a planet anywhere we want at the mouse position by pressing a key. And we can see how the planets will behave. So let's look at the code and see how this works. I'm just going to show you my index file first. I have two additional files put in the head section here. I have a planet constructor file. So that's planet.js, as you see right here. And I have a sun constructor file that makes the sun. And that's called sun.js. And that is right here. Okay, let's look at the sketch file. So I have three global variables, the planet, the sun and the scale and in the setup function i'm creating my canvas and then i'm making three sliders one for the planet mass one for the sun mass and one for the scale create slider accepts four arguments the minimum the maximum the start number and how much it can change by when you move the slider just a little little bit so my planet mass goes from 1 to 100 and it starts at 5 and you can change it by 1 and the position property I'm just setting the position to x equal to 10 and y is equal to 10 so top left corner of the screen and then I'm setting the style of that slider to a width of 100 pixels and then I'm doing the same with the other two, except the numbers may change. For the sun mass, I'm starting at 1, going to 100, and it's starting at 20. And you can change it by 1. And I'm just setting the position to an X of 200 and a Y of 10. And the scale slider, scale slider is going to have smaller numbers, right? So I don't want to make it too big or too small. Its minimum is 0 0.001. Its maximum is 2. It starts at 1, so a scale of 1 is normal. And you can change it by 0 0.01. And I'm setting it at the position of X is equal to 10 and Y is equal to 530. And then I'm creating a new planet object. The planet object will be created at X is equal to 100, Y is equal to 100, and a radius of 5. And I'm creating a new sun object. That will be placed in the middle of the canvas, where x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 with a radius of 20. So y is 0, 0 in the middle of the canvas. That's because we translated it, and that's what we're going to go through next. Okay, so here's our draw function. I'm just setting the background to black, and I'm translating to width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. This moves the origin from the top left corner of the canvas to the middle of the canvas. In P5, the origin, or where x equals 0 and y equals 0, is the top left corner of the canvas. But you can move the origin by using translate. Translate means you're just sliding things over. So I'm sliding the origin from the top left corner to the middle of the screen by this translate command by saying I'm moving the origin to width divided by 2, so that's the middle from left to right, and height divided by 2, that's the middle from the top to the bottom. So now the exact middle of the canvas is where x equals 0 and y equals 0. That is the new origin. So what happens to the x and y coordinates? Now it's a little different. y is still positive as you go down, and x is still positive as you go right. But now x is negative if you want to go left from the origin, and y is negative as you go up. Now x can be negative and y can be negative and you'll still be on the can. So the next section of the draw function, I'm just getting the values from the sliders to change the sun properties and planet properties. So let's look at the planet first. So it says a planet.mass is equal to slider planet mass dot value. Yeah, I'm just getting the value from the slider and I'm passing it into the mass of the planet. And then I'm just going to print that out. I'm setting the sex size to 20 and then I'm printing this string plus the variable, the mass of the planet, at x is equal to minus 340 and y is equal to minus 240. So I'm just printing planet mass and the actual number of the planet mass just below that slider. And I'm doing the same thing with the sun mass. So I'm setting the sun mass to the value of the slider of the sun mass. In the text command, I'm printing sun mass plus the variable of that sun mass at x is equal to minus 160 and y is equal to minus 240. And then I'm doing think the same thing with the scale slider. So I'm setting the amount of scale is equal to the value of that slider scale. And then I'm printing text scale plus the value of the scale variable at x is equal to minus 240 and y is equal to 220. 
So at the end of the draw function, I have a couple of planet functions to run and a couple of sun functions to run. The planet update function is in the planet.js file. It just updates the position, velocity, and acceleration of the planet. The show function is also in the planet.js file and that draws the planet at the location. The sun.attract planet, attract is the function and it's in the sun.js file. That's going to calculate the force of gravity on the planet. The show function in the sun.js file is going to draw the sun. Let's finish off the sketch file here. So to be able to place a planet at the mouse when you press the A key, I've used the function key pressed. So the function key pressed will run whenever a key is pressed. So I have to check if it's the A key. If it's not the A key, then it's not going to do anything. So if key is A, then I have to calculate the mouse X and mouse Y positions. I can't just use the mouse X and mouse Y position, and I'll show you why. If I use the mouse X and mouse Y positions, to place a new new planet, watch what happens. It's not placed at the mouse. Now, why is that? It's because we translated this coordinate system. The origin used to be here, and now the origin is right there, right in the middle of the canvas. Mouse X and mouse Y, you can't translate them. Mouse X and mouse Y will always refer to the origin at the top left corner of the screen. So I had to calculate the difference between the translated values and where mouse X and mouse Y is. So let's look at how I did that. Let MX is equal to mouse X minus width divided by two. The translate is adding half of the width to the origin. So I have to subtract half the width of the screen from mouse X. Then I'm multiplying it by the inverse of the scale. The inverse of number is one over whatever that number is, right? The inverse of 10 is one over 10. And that will adjust the scale to where the translated values will be. And then I'm just saying planet is equal to new planet. So I'm forming a new planet object at the MX X coordinate and the MY Y coordinate. And I'm giving it a mass of five. And that's how placing a new planet when the key A pressed works. So that is the sketch file. Let's look at some of the constructor files here. So let's look at the sun file first. So here's our class constructor for sun, class sun, capital S. This is the name of our class and it is a constructor. That means we're going to build objects according to this pattern that we described here. And it says constructor X, Y, M and brackets. That means the starting X position and the starting Y position and M is for mass are going to be passed into this constructor whenever you want a new sun built. When I look at the sketch file and see where the sun is created, it says sun is equal to new sun and I'm giving it the starting X position zero. I'm giving it the starting Y position zero and I'm giving it the mass. I'm giving it the X, Y, and M. So those numbers are going to be passed directly into this constructor and it's going to use these numbers to build it. And then it's going to create a vector for the X and Y position at this dot pause, just short for position. And creating vector, we're just creating a vector from the origin to the X and Y coordinates. And a vector has two things, a direction and a magnitude or how much. So what is the distance between the origin and these X, Y coordinates and and what is the direction from the origin to these X, X and Y coordinates. And since the X, Y coordinates are the same as the origin, right? The origin is zero, zero, and I'm passing in zero and zero for X, Y for the sun. The vector should be zero, right? It's got no magnitude because it's right on top of it. And we're setting this dot mass to equal to the mass value that we passed in here. And now we're going to calculate the force of gravity. The force of gravity is equal to this gravitational constant times this whole fraction here. So M1 is the mass of the sun. M2 is the mass of the planet. So we're going to multiply these and divide it by the distance between the sun and the planet squared. And that distance is measured from the middle of the sun to the middle of the planet. So we have to figure that out. So if we looked at the sketch file, see it says sun.attract. We're running this attract function with this planet object passed into it. So this attract function will calculate the force of gravity. So I'm taking the values from this planet object and I'm saying let force equal to a P5 vector and I'm subtracting, SUB is subtract method for vectors, and I'm subtracting the position of the planet position from the sun position right here. And I'm storing it in force, this force variable. And now I'm calculating the distance squared between the sun and the planet. Remember the distance squared is r squared in this formula. So it says let distance squared is equal to constraint. Constraint means I'm limiting the answer between 
to numbers because we're dealing with pixels right we're dealing with a distance in pixels if it's really really far away uh, we're going to get some wonky results because a pixel is not the same as you know the actual distance force is the distance between the planet and the sun and where it says mag sq so magnitude squared we're squaring that value and that value has to be from 25 to 2500. If it's higher than 2500, it'll be 2500. If it's less than 25, it will be 25. So that will be our distance squared in our formula. And here's our gravitational constant. We're making it 10. And then now we're calculating our actual gravitational force. And that'll be in our strength variable. So we have let strength is equal to G the times this, so the sun mass times the planet mass and we're dividing these two masses multiplied together by the distance squared, which is exactly our formula here. And that's gonna give us our gravitational force stored in this strength variable. Now it says force dot set magnitude. So we're setting the magnitude of the force vector using our strength variable. And then we're just gonna run the apply force function with this gravitational force and we're applying it to the planet. So the apply force function is in the planet.js uh, file. So it's gonna take the value of the gravitational force and apply that force to the planet in the planet.js file. And we'll look at that short. In the show function for the sun, remember the show function is called in the sketch file in the draw function at the end here. So I'm calculating the radius based on the mass slider for the sun and the scale value from the scale slider. So I have to multiply that by the scale. And if you change the mass of the sun, the sun will get bigger, right? Because we're, we're multiplying that by the mass. And if the mass is getting smaller, we're multiplying it by smaller numbers. So the radius will get smaller. So I'm updating the radius if we change it at all. And then we're drawing the ellipse of the sun and I'm multiplying the X position, the Y position and the radius by the scale to draw it at the updated value. So that is the sun constructor. Let's look at the planet.js file. So oh, this is going to construct our planet. It's taking in the X position, Y position and mass value when it is created. And if you look at the sketch file, new pl planet equals new planet. It's giving you an X position of 100, Y position of 100 and a mass value of five. And then when we press our mouse, it's giving you an X position, a Y position, and a mass value. So we're gonna take these values and use them to build our planet. So this dot pause or position, we're creating a vector using the X and Y position. We're gonna give it a random velocity. So when you create a planet, it's going to move in a random direction and the magnitude will be a unit vector, which means it has a magnitude of one. And then we're gonna multiply that just to get it moving a bit by five. You can just set this number to whatever you want. We're setting the mass to mass and we're picking a random random color for each planet. Each planet will have a different color. Now, applying gravitational forces. Remember, apply force was called after we calculated the force of gravitation. Now we're going to take the value of that gravitational force and use it in the planet sketch here. We know force, we know the mass of the planet, and to figure out acceleration, we're gonna use the formula force equals mass times acceleration. So acceleration must be equal to force divided by the mass, and that's what we're doing. It says P5 vector dot div, that's divide. We're dividing the force vector by the mass of this planet to figure out acceleration. Why are we figuring out acceleration? Think about when if you're driving or traveling on a motorized vehicle of some sort. If you're traveling 100 kilometers an hour to Winnipeg, and then a minute later you're going 110 kilometers an hour, your velocity is changing. If your velocity is changing, if you're going from 100 kilometers an hour to 110 kilometers an hour, you have to be accelerating, right? A change in velocity means you're accelerating if, if you're going faster, or decelerating if you're slowing down. So we're adding this force to the acceleration of this planet. Remember the update planet update function is called at the in the draw function in your sketch.js planet.update. So now we're going to update the planet position, velocity and acceleration. So we're just 
we're adding the acceleration to the velocity we're going to add the velocity to the position right if they're moving if they're moving in a direction with a certain magnitude their position has to change what is their new position what is their new xy coordinate now we're setting acceleration to zero that way we can recalculate it and the next time it accelerates it will have a new value based on its velocity and uh, the gravitational force and in the show function remember the show function for the planet is called in the sketch.js file in the draw function it says planet.show this will draw the planet it's going to have a white outline and fill it for this color remember this color was the random color that we picked for this planet and this is this, the rest of it is the same as the sun i am updating the radius to see if there is a change in the planet mass if someone moved the slider up or down then the mass will change and then the radius will change and i'm changing it by the scale i'm multiplying it by the scale to set the scale of the radius to the scale of the slider and in the ellipse i'm drawing the ellipse of the planet and i'm multiplying the x position y position and radius by that scale and that is the end of the planet js constructor file so i hope you add to it in some way there is a way to make it better i think just on the top of my head right now you can only add one planet at a time and it'd be nice if you could add multiple planets to that 